Welcome back to GEMS Podcast. I'm the founder and host, Ms. Genesis Amaris Kemp, and with me today is Jennifer M. Alemani. And here is a bit about Jennifer. Jennifer M. Alemani was born in Brooklyn, New York. She is Latin American with a background from Puerto Rico, Mexico, and Cuba. She was the first to graduate from college in her family with an associate degree in early childhood education from Sunny Cobble Skill and a bachelor's degree in psychology from Brooklyn College. After losing the love of her life three years ago, she began to transform her life through loss and her first book, Mark My Love Was Born. She speaks openly about her grieving process and being okay would not be an okay sometimes. In her memoir, Mark My Love, she explores love, loss, and looking at life differently. Optimal wellness is important to Jennifer. She has been practicing yoga for 13 years. Jennifer is a spiritualist and has been meditating for over 11 years. She currently lives in New York City with her dog, Leo Luna. So without further ado, please welcome Jennifer M. Alemani to GEMS Podcast. Hi, how are you? I'm so glad to be here. I am doing well, Jennifer, and I'm sorry for your loss. I know some people say with time it gets better, but from my experience with time, it does not necessarily get better. It just helps you cope from my perspective. Yes, I think you I think you learn how to navigate it through through time, I want to say. I don't think that I feel at this point, I don't think you 100% heal from it. I just think you learn how to navigate it and then you put your heart back together a little bit and it kind of becomes a newer heart, I want to say. Absolutely. That's been my experience. Yeah. Absolutely. And before we dive into our segment, because we're going to talk about grief, dealing with the trauma and the overall of self-love through it all, because I think it all ties together. But we're going to definitely... Um, get to know you a little bit better on a personal note. So would you like to play a rapid fire game or break the ice up front? Uh, break the ice up front. Okay. She's breaking the ice. So Jennifer, I want you to share something crazy that you've done in your life or a fun but interesting fact about yourself. I think a fun and interesting fact, uh, I'm like a self-teacher. I, I taught myself as a child how to swim, uh, how to ride a bike, uh, and I also taught myself how to cook. So I've kind of just been that self, uh, self-teacher self all, all of my life since childhood. So I think that's a, that's a little bit of a fun fact. Wow, that is a fun fact because I've never met someone who's taught themselves how to swim as a child. So that's incredible. So let's dive into um, your background story and your recent loss of losing the love of your life. Because, you know, we hear these cliche things when you lose, you know, a partner, a parent, a sibling, or anyone close to you. And it's different because I tell people everyone grieves differently and that's okay. Everyone has a different relationship with the person that they lost. So you can't say I know how you feel if you've never been in a situation where you've lost someone of that caliber. So whenever you lost the love of your life, what type of emotions and feelings came came into your world? And was it a sudden loss or was it just, it just happened? Yeah, it, it, uh, he had cancer. So um, it progressed, I want to say towards the end, uh, he had some surgeries and uh, things seemed to be okay. And then things just got rapidly worse. Um, and it's not, um, he was also my second loss experiencing through cancer. I, I had lost my mother um, about 13 years ago now, 14 years actually um, to cancer in a very rapid way as well. I had lost her within 30 days of diagnosis. So a, a similar experience um, with that illness and then it being very you know, quick. Um, so with him and I, you know, it's, um, I, was, I was in shock. I was in, in immense pain um, when I lost him, but it was also a different, a different grief than I experienced from the grief of my mother. Like you said, I think um, grieving is very intimate. Uh, how we all go through it is going to be different for each and every person, right? And even if 
even if someone has siblings, right? The siblings are going to experience the loss of that parent differently because you had a different relationship. So um, with my boyfriend, I think, um, you know, I, I believe he was probably meant to leave this earth at that period of time, you know, because I do believe that as a spiritualist, we all have a little mapping of our life is already kind of predetermined. Um, but with him and I, um, I want to say we, we met, we had a relationship. It was about a 10 month long relationship. I had met him. I was already in my mid forties and he was in his, uh, in his fifties and he had went through a divorce. I already had a long-term relationship that had ended. So I think that we didn't think we'd find love again at that point in our life. And we did. So we fell in love very quickly. Um, but then six months into the relationship, you know, he got, he got diagnosed and then he was gone 10 months later, but um, I do know he was a godsend in my life. So regardless of what had happened and the shock I was in, I knew he was meant to be in my life. I knew we were meant to meet each other before he left uh, this earth. And thank you for sharing that from both perspectives, the loss of your boyfriend, but also the loss of your mother. And the silver lining I heard was both of them passed from cancer, but the way you grieve was different because of the relationship you had with each one of them. And since um, you lost both of them to cancer, have you done anything to contribute to being an advocate for um, cancer? Yes, I've done a lot of, um, I've done multiple like walks, like donated walks, you know, where I, I collect money and do, you know, those walks and then donate money myself as well. Um, but I also made my own peace with that word cancer also um, in my own way with it. I think that with my mother, I was very angry. I was angry. I wanted to know why I was questioning God a lot. Um, and then when Roger passed, I just think it was different. I was at, I don't want to say at peace with the word, but I didn't question those things. I wasn't in that angry state of the why of it or questioning God, I just kind of accepted what I was given and kind of just went with the flow. And that brought me to look at life differently, you know, his passing. Mm, okay. So one thing that I heard um, throughout the loss of your mom and your and Roger with the cancer is that as time went on, you had a different relationship with the word cancer and you went from questioning to really accepting in a sense. And I think it's with you being a spiritualist. And there was definitely some personal growth there as well, as well as maybe some spiritual growth and enlightenment. And feel free to correct me if I am wrong. So was that the case for you? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've always um, been connected spiritually, but it was even, it grew even much more after after Roger passed. I think it grew after my mother passed, but I when I look back now, I, I think that I left myself in the pain and I kind of lived my life in the pain after she passed for a very long time. And I think that when he passed, you know, the other side, the universe, the angels, however you want to put it, God wanted me to rip open a lot of pain that I had, I think, hidden and didn't realize like with my mother. So there was, yes, an extreme enlightenment of my life. And it's grown, you know, immensely since since that period also. And from the growth of the enlightenment that you faced, Jennifer, what are some other ways that helped you heal from the trauma to just really get back to who Jennifer is and not just on the surface level, but on an internal and core level? Yeah, I, I got out into nature more. I'll be honest, I was taking walks more. I want to say the tree, I tell people the trees were speaking to me because I feel like they were. Um, I just, I just got back, back to nature. I want to say that that mother nature, that back to who we are, what we come from, right? I think how, yeah, I want, that's the easy way for me to put it. Um, but I was also meditating more. I, I meditate every single day now. Um, and that's always been a part of my space. I just became more devout to that practice of it because I knew what it was doing for me. I knew it was healing me from the inside out. Um, and then I also knew the words that were coming out of me when I wrote the book were to help others, that it wasn't just about myself. I knew it was more than just myself. I knew it was healing myself, but then all, then putting it out there to try to help heal others in any way, if it, if it, if it's possible, you know, what anyone, anyone can get from my story. I, I think that would be such a blessing. Mm, beautiful. So connecting with nature was a sense of freeing you. It was a sense of liberation. And as you connected with nature, it was like you had that intuition, you had that discernment and that spiritual clarity to hear what was being said to you, because maybe you didn't have the distractions 
uh, to take you off course. And then you started to just go through the healing process. But one thing that I could hear kind of as you're talking is that you did it for yourself because sometimes people who go through loss of a loved one and whether it's a sudden loss or whether it's a loss that happens over time, from the illness, you can't force them into the healing journey. They have to be ready to, you know, take that embark journey on their own. Because if you rush them through that process, then as they're going through it, there may be things that come up that trigger them, that takes them right back to where they started. So throughout your journey, at what phase did you think that, okay, Jennifer, now is the time for me to start penning this memoir? I was really just drawn to it. It was it was three months after he passed. I felt I felt pulled to go outside. I lived uh, I lived in upstate New York at the time, and there was a pool um, in the complex that I lived in. And I felt drawn to just go out and sit by the the pool and start writing. And then I was writing very quickly, like every single evening after work. I was it was literally the pen was moving very quickly on its own, and I knew it was more than myself. It was something more than I had experienced. I've always journaled since I was in high school. And this, this was different. A lot of things were coming out about his passing, about my mother's passing, um, but then also about myself. A lot of, um, I realized I didn't, I didn't have that self-love that I thought I had. Um, so that also came out. So I knew, I knew it was being directed, I wanna say from my angels on the other side of, there's a lot of stuff you need to uncover now. And basically they were telling me like, now's the time, let's get it all out at, at once basically. I love that. So it was just flowing out of you. And as it was flowing out of you, it was spilling over onto the pages. And I could also see that there was some connection between the loss that you had with your mother and the loss that you had with Roger. And then you kind of mirror those two together, if I'm correct. And you start to see how things transition, but also transform. Is that, uh, would you say that's an accurate um, depiction? Yeah, absolutely. Because I also, I had, it gave me a moment to look at myself and realize that that discovery of that I didn't fully grieve for her, that I stayed in this middle zone, I want to call it, for a very long time. It's over a decade. And then I realized with him, I felt drawn that I needed to lift up faster and and change things and look at things differently and start living my life like to, to not go down that road again of not fully living because I lost someone I love deeply it was you know he it's almost like he gave me a new life I want to say to be honest with you it was a, a new life that was given to me that I realized and I was grateful for it you know I wake up every single day and I thank God in the universe for waking me up I didn't do that before I've always been grateful but physically saying it every single day that that's a new thing. And it's, it's brought me more joy. You know, it's opened up that, that joyful space, you know, just wide open. And let's um, focus on the name because I could see um, the book over to my left, which is either your left or your right. And the title says mark my love, but then the background, it's like you have the red etching. So tell me mm -hmm. why you came up with the name of your book and walk me through the cover design, because I think there's more substance behind the cover than I'm being drawn to. Yeah, I, I titled it mark my love because I was basically marking points of love in my life. And I wanted other people to take a look at the love that they have in their life currently and to look at it differently because I don't think that I did that actively until I had the losses. Um, also, when it came to the cover, when I chatted with the design team, I, I told them that I wanted people to feel love looking at the cover. I wanted it to flow. I wanted them to have that sort of reaction when they when they look at it and see it. Um, so that's, that's kind of behind the, the design of it. Mm, I like that. And then red, um, the significance of red, you, it makes you think of love, but whenever you hear, see red, it's like cheerful, vibrant, fun. But was there a specific reason why the red is kind of etched over? And I'm trying to get like a closer look at it because it kind of looks like it's splattered, but was there any rhyme or reason to how the red is positioned? No, I, I don't think so. I think the design team just kind of put that out there that I wanted them to feel, I wanted people to feel that love, okay. right? I want it, but I also wanted it to seem flowy. I wanted the design to flow because in the, in the book, there's different points of my life that I talk about 
but I also want people to see that flow of my life, how different, I, I faced different adverse, adversaries in my life of different things that happened and how I kind of came through, you know, does that make sense? So I wanted that flow of the design to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you're talking through, it kind of looks like a ribbon now, as I was um, looking closely, like red ribbons that are kind of interwoven. And I want to, um, I want you to focus on this question and just dig a little bit deep here. As you were writing, um, Mark, my love, were there any parts of the book that were harder to write than others? And how did you get over it, if so? Uh, I think I think speaking about my mom uh, in the hospital and going in, into depth and revisiting that again, I want to say that that was probably the hardest part um, to get through and to note some of the conversations I had with her. Um, throughout the entire book, I'll be honest, when I was writing it, there was tear, tears flowing. There wasn't one moment that I wasn't crying through any piece of it. Even during fun parts that made me laugh, I was still crying. It was very cathartic, um, but it wasn't a sad cry. I want to say it was a cry that I just needed to cleanse my insides basically, you know, and that that's, but yeah, the, the, this, the part with my mom was the hardest. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. And I like how you said the tears weren't the sad part, but the tears, they were almost like tears of joy and tears of freeing, tears of cleansing. And people have to realize that crying is not a sign of weakness. It's actually a sign of strength depending how you look at it, because it's allowing you to release some of the captivity in your inner spirit and soul and allowing you to come to grips with certain things that happen and say, okay, I acknowledge that it's happened. I am releasing the pain and I'm becoming content with the situation. And that's not always easy, in my opinion. Like I lost my dad in November of 2020 and it was very sudden and it was due to medical negligence and the thing that I hated the most that people said to me was I know how you feel when in actuality some of the people who were saying it to me I'm like I didn't understand how they knew how I feel because both of their parents were very much alive so you don't know what it's like to lose a parent if you've never lost one just like you can't tell somebody who's lost a child I know how you feel if your children are living, or in your case, Jennifer, losing a partner, someone that, you know, was your other half that complimented you, and that just made you feel whole and complete. You can't say, oh, Jennifer, I know how you feel after losing Roger. If your partner is with you, you can't say that, or whatever the cliche lines are, because they think that it's helpful, but in actuality, it could very much trigger and exasperate the situation. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm sorry for your loss, um, by the way. Um, but yeah, I, I've had the same thing where I had people say, I know how you feel. I, I, I don't say those words to people. I, you know, I may tell them, I, I may tell them something along the lines of I've experienced pain of loss. I'll say something like that, but I don't, I don't classify it as this, the same. I don't use that word the same because like you said, right, we're never going to have the same experiences. Um, and it's hard. I've had people say to me flat out about the loss of my mom like oh when are you going to get through this at, at this point you know and that's that's hard right because my mom for me my personal story she was a single mom so she was my mom my dad and she became my best friend so it was like I lost three people like she we spoke multiple times a day so that's hard when someone like that you know leaves leaves your life um but I I just realized people um people are going to be people sometimes I can't um I'm not, I'm not in shock anymore about some of the things that have been said to me about grieving and loss. You know, I just try to spread my own word and give my own, put my own kindness out there and, and make myself, try to make myself a better person every single day um, in hopes that it will seep out into the collective, I guess. And thank you for saying that. And thank you for um, the condolences, Jennifer. And since the book has been out on the market, what are some of the feedbacks and reviews that you've gotten? Yeah, I, a lot of folks have told me uh, the book is very inspirational. Uh, it shows them how I've gotten through things um, and how I've changed my life around. Um, I was formerly a human resources professional for 22 years, and now I'm on this journey of being an author. I'm a Reiki master, you know, a coach and a mentor. So it's my first time being in that creative space. So people people see that too. So that's become inspirational um, for them. But, um, you know, it's, it's given a lot of people hope too. 
I, I want to say, they, they hear the story that me getting up after meeting the love of my life and then losing him, right? So falling in love with him and then losing him and me getting through that roller coaster and being a joyful person today, as you see, you know, people see that as well. That's, if she can do that, hope, you know, they, maybe they can get, get through some of their, uh, their trials that they're being faced with. Yes, and I truly, truly believe that we are all here as some form of inspiration or another to help somebody else. And life circumstances don't just happen to us, but they happen for us. So we may begin to grow, whether it's personally or professionally, or whether it's mentally, emotionally, physically, or even spiritually. And we have to take the situations that happen and be mindful of how we react to the situation. But what lessons are we being taught from that? And just to hear you transition out of 22 years from an HR sector into authorship, um, and I have a warm and strong spot for authors since I'm one as well. And then even the Reiki master. And I just want to put some context around that because some um, of the audience may not necessarily know what a Reiki master is. So can you share a little bit more on what you do as a Reiki master? Because some people may be like, is she a woo-woo person <laughs> or anything like that? It's a, so Reiki, Reiki is, it's, it's energy healing. So it's energy work, um, which, you know, we, everything is energy. Everything that we exist is energy, you know. So it may, it may be classified as being in a little bit of the woo-woo space, but I strongly believe in it. Um, I had gotten a bunch of Reiki sessions over the course of, of my lifetime and they've always helped me. Um, and I was drawn to become a Reiki practitioner. It wasn't something I set out to do. And I gotta tell you, every single day I give myself a Reiki session in the morning and the evening, and I've never been healthier since. And that means health physically, emotionally, everything inclusive of it. Um, and I know it has something to do with it. I even do Reiki on my dog to get him to relax and, and it works. So, um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's energy work. So whenever you think about the energy work, um, do you encompass the different chakras into that practice or is that something that's done as a standalone? I, I incorporate cleansing my chakras when I, when I do uh, Reiki and not, not everybody has to, but, but I, I tend to, it's, it's kind of like, I figure if we're doing energy work, it might as well incorporate the chakras as, as well. And do you think um, being involved in the Reiki space has really helped you practice that self-care and awareness as you go through the overall healing process of the trauma and the grief? Oh, absolutely. Because I've, I've, I've never loved myself more than I love myself today, right here, right now. And, and that's important. You know, we don't realize it. And, and I didn't realize it till I went through all the trauma. And now, now I take care of myself. I realize that I have to be number one in order to keep myself, you know, physically, emotionally healthy in order to be that for the collective or what I want to see out there, then I need to practice it within myself. So um, yeah, it's, it's part of my daily life. It's, uh, it's a big part of my life and I don't see that changing. Now I want you to share some tips and tricks to help those listening who may be on their grief journey right now and going through their own healing process, but then also encourage them to practice self-care as well, because even though you're grieving, you still need to have some form of self-care so you don't allow yourself to sit in the grief longer, because there are times where you may feel like you don't want to get out of bed. There's times where you don't want to talk to certain people. You just want them to leave you alone. There are times where anger hides in front of you and you, you love those people that are calling you and checking on you, but you're just so angry that sometimes you have that outer body experience where it's like those word vomits and those faux pas and you just, just want to tell somebody, just shut the puck up and leave me alone. <laughs> but um, we're human and none of us are perfect. So I definitely want you to give them some practical tips to challenge where they are, but then also to inspire them that take a look in the mirror and get some self-care in because who's going to love you better than you? Yeah, I want to say first thing, you know, is what I told myself was to take it day by day. I didn't put a lot of pressure on myself looking at time and, and looking at the whole week or, or what may be and what was ahead of me, right? So I took it day by day, moment by moment. And that's what I had to do. So I think that's number one to tell people um, and give yourself some, some grace. I wanna say, I used to beat myself up a lot. Like, oh, I would get sad and I'm crying and then I'm, I'm in the corner again. And I would 
beat myself up about that, but give yourself grace, right? You have to give yourself grace in order to give others grace and get to that space. So why not give it to yourself? Um, and then that third thing, you know, like I mentioned before, getting out of nature, even just a little bit, you know, you may not want to get out and socialize with people. And I get that, you know, I've been there, done that, but just get out and get into nature, walk a little bit, right? You're, you'll, you'll be amongst people, but they're not maybe interacting or talking with you, right? And you're left, you're left in your own um, so solitude because that's needed sometimes. But I think those are the main things I would say um, to folks. And then, you know, if you're able to meditate a little bit, you know, I don't wanna, I can't, I'm not gonna put it out there and say, oh, if you meditate, you're gonna get in contact with your lost loved ones for sure. You know, we're all on a different journey with that. But I wanna say, once I began to meditate, I was connected with them a little bit more. I felt them a little bit more. Um, and I feel like I can chat with them a little bit more. It's, it's more comfortable for me because of that. So that's also, I think, a tip that I'd like to share with others because I think that we don't talk about that as much because it may be considered woo woo. And you know, why do you think you're talking to your mother on the other side, you know, but she's watching over me. I think that they all are. I don't think that we leave this earth completely. I think we're still here in spirit, you know, and I, I, I believe that. Thank you for sharing. Um, so give yourself grace. And I would also add, have mercy upon yourself. Connect with nature, go on those walks and have that time alone where you're able to recharge, refuel, rejuvenate, and just recalibrate mind, body, and soul. And then don't tune off the fact that um, your loved one that passed on may be talking to you. And sometimes they show up as animals. Like I know when my dad passed, there was always birds outside my window. And at first I didn't pay attention until someone brought that to my attention. Um, there was one day where I walked into the laundry room and it smelled like my dad was physically just in the laundry room and it scared the bejeebies out of me. But then when I told it to my mom, she's like, oh, your dad was probably just letting you know that he's here and he's watching over you and just really connect to that still small voice inside of you because that voice is there to protect and guide you, not to scare you or lead you down a path that is going to harm you. So I definitely want to add that in from my perspective. I am a, you know, I am religious and spiritual based on how I was raised. And sometimes I feel like whenever we're going through trauma, we cut off that sense of awareness and we try to shut things out because we don't necessarily want to condone it when in actuality, it's something natural and everyone has to get to that point on their own. Um, so Jennifer, as we begin to wind down, I want you to leave the listeners and viewers with your call to action for this segment. If you wanna challenge them, give them a challenge because we're here to educate, inspire, motivate. If you want them to follow you on your social media, plug that or grab the copy of your book, whatever your call to action is, please leave it. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd love people to follow me on, on Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, I'm jennifer.m.alamani. Uh, my website is jennifermalamani.com. Uh, you can get Mark My Love there. Um, but there's also inspirational thoughts on, on my webpage. It's not just about my book. I, you know, whether the pictures that are there are inspirational to you or some of the things that I'm telling you. I just want people to live their life in love if that makes sense. And that means beginning with self-love, that's the most important thing. And I think I realized that on my own journey and that's why I'm trying to share that with others. So um, bottom line before we leave, it's, it's all about love. And I think that's what we're here to learn um, ultimately. Yes, and I would say that one song, it's like, what's love got to do, got to do with it? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm definitely not a singer, but I just uh, felt led to just share that. And Jennifer, plug your website and that social media again, or what, yeah. whichever ones yeah. you think out primarily. Yeah, on. The, yeah the, web, the website is jennifermalamani.com and uh, Instagram is jennifer.m.alamani. There goes my dog. He has a lot to say too sometimes. <laughs> Amazing. And there you have it, listeners and viewers of GEMS podcast, Jennifer M. Alamani. She is the author of Mark My Love. Go out and grab a copy of her book, support her on this journey, or share it with someone in your network that is going through their own grief or loss. And remember, grief doesn't have to be from the loss of a loved one. It could be the loss of a pet. It could be the loss of a relationship, the loss of a job 
or there's various forms of griefs, but just make sure that you let that person know that you are there for them and don't necessarily try to fix them as they're on their journey because their journey is just very much that. It's their journey. But what they need you to do is be that sounding board be that listening ear and just shower them with love. Ask them, is there anything that I can do for you versus making assumptions? So I challenge you to share and share and subscribe to this um, segment. We're on 40 plus platforms. For those of you interested in video components, you can see the video at YouTube by typing in at GEMS with Genesis Amaris Kemp. And lastly, but not least, I am continually looking for brand sponsors. Space is limited, but you can have your products and services heard right here, where we are currently ranked in the top 3% globally out of 2.8 million podcasts per www.listennotes.com. So you could also find out more information about becoming a sponsor at my website, which is genesisamariskemp.net and just scrolling down to the podcast tab. Until next time, peace, love, and lots of blessings. Have grace, have mercy, because every day you wake up, it's a day that you hit that reset button that you could be present in the moment. You can't rush into the future just like you can't reverse back into the past. So be present and love yourself.